just have beefs and old grudges that they try to get off in other ways. Wow. 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 Yo. Hey, listen. So, as you guys know, I've been struggling to figure out how I was going to address this. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, do I ignore it? Do I go in? So, I decided to take some prayer, convene with the ancestors, and oddly enough, they sent me Prince B. Here's what that conversation went like. So, what happened? He got this video that he posted up just yesterday. And like, yo, he, he damn near slandering me. Like the way, yo, son trying to mischaracterize me, make me out to be like the villain. The villain's crazy, son. So he's upset about, he's upset well, about- Me and Karis one to had a conversation about this very thing. And it was mad love. And we walked away on someone, yo, my man. Like, oh, yo, it's so love. Yo, I appreciate you, King. Thank you for that. He apologized to me, all of that. This dude sucking like I'm holding a grudge, but he mentioned this stuff. For Uddy, like you took my stuff in 2006. Yeah, I found that kind of odd because he's talking about an article that she wrote in 2006, 18 years later, but he's claiming that you have been holding the grudge for oh so many years. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, it seems like he's set adrift on the memory bliss of you. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to respond to that. Ba -da -da -ba -da -da -da. Set right. adrift of memory bliss of you. Oh. You. Okay, all right, okay. Well, yo, King, I appreciate you. I'm going to just, you know, you know, is there anything you want me to convey to them? If you get a chance to, tell them I said that that video was really... Basuda! So, in the recent race for hip-hop relevancy, DJ Kenny Parker of the notorious BDP crew creates a clickbait video to help bolster his YouTube views Based on a beef between KRS-One and the UMCs. However, there is no beef between KRS-One and the UMCs. And it becomes glaringly obvious as we watch the video, 18 minutes and 51 seconds, we discover that the majority of his vitriol is pointed at yours truly, Cool Kim MC. In the recent interview, Cool Kim had this to say. I don't know where this shit is coming from, yo. And son sound mad. Like, you see, you see the video? Like, son is really like, ooh, uh, 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 I'm mad. Like, what the fuck, yo, what's that about? You know, on the real side, this video that he posted up could have been a wonderful opportunity to break out down an analysis of what retroactive accountability looks like. Um, to analyze and, and really just dig into the mistakes that they made along their journey and how those mistakes culminated into beef. And the impact that some of the things they did, even simply misspeaking, unintentionally misspeaking, right, could have on the people around them. You understand? This would have been a wonderful cautionary tale for younger MCs, young people in hip hop, um, and an awesome opportunity to show what uh, uh, conflict resolution looks like as you mature. Uh, we're really concerned about the level of violence right now in hip hop and I don't think that this video helps to serve rectify it. It just it just magnifies an issue that isn't even an issue. Who was waiting for us right there? The UMCs. And Cool Kim comes up to Karis One and goes, Yo, everybody in the crowd thinks you dissed us. And Chris was like, what are you talking about? I didn't diss y'all. I don't have no beef with the UMCs. Cool Kim said, nah, but when you came on the stage during your freestyle section and said, UMCs think you can freestyle, but you can't, everybody thought you was talking about us. And Chris said, no, I just said UMCs, like people in the crowd, not the UMCs. So Cool Kim said, yeah, but the people don't know that. So, you know, let's keep it tall, man. Karis one got this enclave, a, 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 a contingent of fans that's just, these dudes is weirdos. You know what I'm saying? Like, they just be weirdos. Like, they, they be lame dudes in real life. But they feel like if they dick ride Chris and curry his favor, that they'll be cool. Like, that's their tribe of trying to be cool. You know what I'm saying? So they do anything for the teacher. Dude, the teacher said the teacher. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's cringy shit. You know what I'm saying? But, yo, they'll do anything to try to, like, 
she'll make him happy. You understand? And, yo, we had to deal with that, man. Like, in a real way. In a very unfortunate and real way. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, that's one thing. If you were a million-dollar star king and you got money for security and you could be driving it, like, it's a, you know what I'm saying? It's another thing. If you hoofing it, you just, you still try to make it. You know, you're trying to make it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a different engagement. You know what I'm saying? And what's ill about it is that show, you know, we suffered past it at, at some point. You know what I'm saying? At some point, it eased up. But, you know, it was what it was. But at the same token, it wasn't one of them things that I was like, yo, I'm going to let that rock. Like, I'm not going to someday, one day, if I get the opportunity, not approach Chris about this shit and be like, yo, son, this is what you did to us. I, that's definitely what's going to happen. You heard? And eventually, it actually did. And one of the hosts of the event was a guy called NY Oil. He spoke. Karis One spoke. Everyone interacted with, he, with each other. And at the end of the day, I went home. I didn't know till after the event that this guy, New York Oil, was in fact the MC Cool Kim from the UMCs. He looked a little different. This time, he was a lot bigger. So, yeah, this, this, that, this, that, this definitely happens. We was at Magic Johnson Theater in Harlem, New York. You heard? And they, we were having a discussion. There was a discussion forum about some plans that they was trying to do. That, you know, some black empowerment shit, to put it bluntly. And I was all in for that because I'm about that. The mission comes first. You know how I look in the middle of this thing, jumping up, be like, Yo, Chris, I need to talk to you, though, because that's crazy, son. The people come first. The mission comes first. My, my grievance can come afterwards. That's how that worked, King, if you're in this thing for real. So that's what time I was on. When it was over, yo, Chris, and, you know, myself as artists and like that, the people knew that, you know, we were shaking hands and kissing babies, you know, the vibes. Like, hey, how you doing? I peace, you know, hugs, all that, you know what I mean? And once that settled down, I was like, yo, Chris, can I have a word with you, brother? You know, now I'm looking for Kenny, too. But Kenny skated before I had the opportunity to confront him as well. Because I'm on that type of time. You understand? I'm on that, yo. And I'm like, yo, Chris, let me build with you, King. And me and him chuck. And, and now I take off my... Yo, I used to wear shades all the time. It's NYO. all have big afro shades. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, King. Yo, let me tell you something, King. First and foremost, yo, I'm cool, Kim, from the UMCs. That's who I am. And, yo, I go on to admonish that brother with love. You heard? You gotta let them know, fam. You know, listen, fam. At the time, the issue was, yo, son, yo, there's no accountability for you, bro. Yo, you're too important. Your voice has too much power for you to be able to just talk willy nilly and just say things. You don't understand how you're hurting people. This is what happened to us because you fired off and did something and then didn't do nothing about it, King. And we suffered because of that. And now, you know, I, I spoke my truth in my heart to this brother. Wasn't about, no, yo, son, you, yo, yo. Well, no, nah, it wasn't none of that. It didn't, need, it didn't need to happen like that. What needed to be heard was heard. And he listened to what I said. And he paused for a minute after I finished everything I had to say. He listened to me respectfully, yo. Heard me all the way out. And once I finished what he said, he paused for a minute. He looked at me and said, Oil. I'm sorry, Oil. I'm sorry, Oil. Yo, you right. In that exact moment, the frustration and stress that I had experienced earlier on as a UMC was gone. Because if I have a beef with a man and that man, or I have a, you know, an issue with something that you did, because there ain't no beef. It's an issue. You know what I'm saying? A disagreement. I don't like what you did. But you apologize to me sincerely, yo. Yo, it's over. It's over. You understand what I'm saying? And he apologized to me. And then he said something I thought was extremely poignant. He said to me, yo, this is the price when you have nothing but dick riders around you. It's nobody to hold you accountable. Now, Kenny, I don't know to what extent you were explaining, you know, you're talking to your brother whether he's vetting any of these things that you're talking about, if he's aware of what you're talking about and if you know if you're running any of this by him or if you even asked him about this, then know that we had a wonderful conversation. You understand? I'm like, I'm not sure. Because in my version of the story, Karis One is a stand up dude that when confronted with what went on on some real shit, yo, he apologized like a man. And he earned a, a, a degree of respect that I will never lose for him. 
In your version of the story, this nigga's just strong and wrong. I don't know which one you want to rock with. I'm going to stick with my story. You understand what I'm saying? About a dude that it took many years before I was able to confront him about something that he did wrong. But when I was able to and speak words of truth and power to him, you know, that, that man absorbed that and apologized like a real fucking dude. That's my story. Now, as it relates to the PM Dawn thing, I'll say as simple as this. Hip-hop has got to get out of its feelings. Black men, black women have got to get out their feelings. Yo, we can analyze the things we did retrospectively and recognize now that we are older and more mature that some things that we might have did may not have been what's up. Might have been bully vibes. Might have been not cool. Might have been unnecessary. Might have been unwarranted. Might have been heavy-handed. You heard? We can recognize that. And recognize that we made a mistake somewhere in this. So that was the build on my article, Hip Hop Sucks Because You. I did one about Karis one. And the following one was about the UMCs. Because I took ownership for what people perceive of us changing our style. Not really understanding what we went through. But regardless, I had likened it to the trial of Job. And that we had failed to stay true to our ethos. Regardless of what we were going through. And how badly we were being treated. But that's another story for another time. Yo, son. I'm not trying to have, you know, make more beef out of it, but I ain't running from it either, King. I'm not standing for nobody disrespecting my character, because I'm not, I'm, 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 I do too much good in this world for the hat at, yo. And I'm not going to tolerate it, yo. I'm just, that's how I'm cut. So, you know, you better love me and leave me alone, you heard? This is your brother Cool Kim signing out. Peace.